My name is Laura Nye, and I am the U.S. Specialist for Africa at Intu University Partnerships. I'm based in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm originally from the U.S., and I work specifically with and support students and agents in Sub-Saharan Africa for all of the issues that are related to the United States. Intu is an organization that supports students to apply for entry for both undergraduate and graduate degree programs. But we also work with universities to create preparation programs designed for students who don't yet meet the university's entrance requirements. So for more than 10 years, Intu has helped uh, more than a thousand students or several thousand students around the world uh, pursue their dreams of enrolling at universities in the US, but also the United Kingdom and China. And so essentially, whether or not students meet the direct entry requirements, we can help. So we do offer uh, pathway programs, what we call them international year one programs that are built into the four year bachelor's degree program that a student would take. And I think it's very important to kind of point out here that um, INTU has these universities and the, the, when a, a student goes to the university campus, and it, or goes to the university, they are going to the campus itself. They're not going to anything different. They're not fe they're, they're not going to feel like they're in a, a different place because they've gone through the Intu portal. So can you explain what happens with a student who applies via Intu when they arrive on campus? What does campus look like to them? And how, how is it different to the kids who are just, you know, the regular American kid who's applying to the same university? Yep, campus looks the same. So students who start with INTU are living in the same residential halls. They are living or they're going to the same dining facility. They're using the same uh, gym they're, or fitness facility. They're going to the same football games. Everything is the same except for their maybe their first semester or their first year when they start with that pathway. The classes are capped at typically 25 or 30 students instead of if you were a direct entry student, you're going to see maybe 300 or even 400 students in your freshman year classes or seminars, which for I think a lot of international students and, and perhaps even a lot of domestic US citizens that can be quite overwhelming. So mm -hmm. starting with a pathway, you're going to have this essentially this softer landing where you're going to have intentional meetings with academic advisors or coaches to make Make sure that you are assimilating into the U.S. university culture, the American culture, and, and that you're, you're going to thrive and succeed academically and socially. That's a yeah. huge service, especially because, I mean, when you think about the United States has four time zones, you know, so kids who are going to end up at Oregon State University from South Africa are nine or ten time zones away. Yeah. Um, so they're on opposite schedules to their support system. So to have that support system on campus is amazing. Yep. One thing I also like to talk about is with Colorado State specifically, for students who are joining, you know, with the INTO pathway or the in, in, INTO International Year One, they're assigned a peer mentor right away. So they're, yes, they have wow. an academic advisor or professor advisor, but they're also being assigned a peer mentor. So somebody who's maybe a year older than them, or obviously who's a current student, to just make sure that as a student, hey, if you've got questions and you're not comfortable talking to your professor, let me know, I'm here for you. And again, just another mm -hmm. touch point to make sure that they're gonna be successful academically and socially. Mm -hmm. Colorado State is a great campus. I was there last year <laughs> and they have a brand new biology building. The the um, stadium had just been finished with a nice, nice fat tire brewery in the stadium. And yeah. it's a it's a fantastic campus. Can you just give us a list of the, this, the universities in the United States that Intu works with? So Intu partners with 11 universities universities that offer both direct entry and international year one or pathway and all of our partners are nationally ranked within the top five percent of universities in the US so they include Oregon State and Washington State University which you can see in the Pacific Northwest um, there's Colorado State University st. Louis Illinois State Illinois State University the University of Alabama at Birmingham University of South Florida George Mason University Drew University Hofstra University University and Suffolk University. So our universities are all over the United States. We've got them in major cities such as, um, you know, right outside of, of New York City, but in Tampa, right outside of Denver, um, in between Chicago and St. Louis, uh, Missouri. So universities that are in major cities, but also some college towns as well. 
I think, I think when students go to a university in a college town, they tend to be a bit more engaged with their community. Maybe they're volunteering a little bit more. They're getting to know who their neighbors are. They're definitely going to the football games on a Friday or a Saturday night um, or Saturday afternoon. And, and I think things in a college town are also a little bit slower paced, which some students might enjoy. You know, you're within a drivable distance to a bigger city, but you don't have the distractions of a, of a major city kind of weighing you down. You're able to focus on your academics and, and uh, get to know your community that way. So there's definitely some good things about being in a college town. Mm. I think that's a great point, and it's something that's important to, to bring up that um, I often talk to students about as I'm, you know, counseling them, is that it's important to, for them to kind of understand a college town versus a city. If some kids love being in a city, they want access to the arts or those, you know, good restaurants, they're not so big into sport, that's great. You know, or they might want to be somewhere that has, you know, like Colorado State where you can see the Rocky Mountains and you can get on the ski bus on the weekends or go backpacking in Rocky Mountain National Park. Or, you know, some kids just want to be in a college town that's just the college town that's got the great microbrews or the nice, you know, bar scene or whatever it is. But I think it's important to know when you're applying to universities um, if that what the kind of place that you, you like to be. I mean, Corvallis, Oregon is a great university town. They've also got, um, you know, a really nice campus on the coast for marine biology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's important to kind of take those factors in because it does, whether you're happy in your environment, it's going to affect how you study and how you learn. Um, we talked a little bit about the difference between international year one and direct entry. Um, I don't know if you want to expound a bit more on that or if we want to kind of get into the unique majors that the different universities are known for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let me just, I, I want to reiterate with the International Year One or the pathway that it, again, it's designed to be this um, softer landing to provide additional support for students, but it's really important to take away that it does not add any additional time to a bachelor's degree program. So students can go in and really have the best of these uh, of the both worlds of, of beginning their university studies at a major research intensive university, but not being overwhelmed with having 400 students in a classroom, right? And so having this capped, the number of students capped at 25 or 30, and you're really going to be able to get to know who your professors are and your mentors are right away in that first semester or that first year who are again going to carry you through your four years but it's a little bit easier to get to know them when you only have 25 students in a classroom versus 300 or 400 students in a lecture hall so um, in terms of the the unique majors that are available at each of into universities partners. <laughs> um, OSU obviously is, is very well known, as you said, uh, for oceanography and marine biology. And OSU is one of the two universities in the US, the other one being Penn State closer to the East Coast, uh, that has the land, sea, space, and sun grant designation, mm. which means Essentially, the government and all the and and the and the organizations really believe in the research that the students are doing and the faculty are doing, and so they're pumping in a lot of money to make sure that they're they're studying the land, sea, space, sun, all of that. Okay, uh, USF is very well known for biomedical sciences. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of students end up studying biomedicine, and then they'll perhaps go on and 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 try their hand at at. Uh, uh, health professions such as medicine or physical therapy, for example. Uh, Colorado State, I think, is very unique. Yes, it is in this um, very outdoorsy community, but it also is ranked number five in the U.S. for having one of the best fashion merchandising schools, which, oh, wow. yeah, very different. It's also <laughs> a very good STEM school, science, technology, engineering, and math, but very unique that they're ranked number five in the U.S. for having a fa uh, top fashion merchandising school. And usually we think of New York, for example, uh, being the capital of fashion, fashion mer merchandising. Uh, George Mason University, which is located right outside of Washington, D.C., has a highly ranked cybersecurity program. Uh, oh, and their wow. students are going on to work with the, with the U.S. government. Uh, so they're very well known for cybersecurity. Uh, Drew University is located outside of um, New York City, and they are a liberal arts college, which is different from every one of our other university partners. At a liberal arts university, students are able to combine various degrees that are completely opposite of each other. So for example, somebody could study computer science and theater or economics and anthropology, for example. 
And Drew is very well known, obviously, for being a liberal arts school, a top liberal arts school, but they have a uh, top 10 theater program in the U.S. Yeah, also very well known for their uh, semester programs in New York City. And I think the most highly regarded is the Semester on Wall Street program where students are spending some time in New York City on Wall Street uh, and then going back to campus. So that I think is an added benefit. Uh, St. Louis University is, uh, will offer aviation. You can also get your uh, corporate, your, excuse me, your, your commercial public, commercial private license and your private pilot license, your CPL or your PPL. Oh, wow. Yep. And then they also offer aerospace engineering. And one quick fact about St. Louis is that every NASA mission has had a St. Louis University graduate on its team, including the oh. most recent SpaceX. Yeah. Yep. So very well known with aviation and aerospace engineering. Uh, UAB, University of Alabama at Birmingham, is very well known for public health and nursing, and they are right now really re leading the charge on the research with COVID-19 in the U.S. WSU has a five-year bachelor's to master's degree, so it's a two plus three, so two years of a bachelor's degree, three years of master's degree for architecture. Uh, Suffolk is very well known for business and finance. There's more than 1,400 financial firms in the Boston area. So if anybody wants business analytics or finance, Suffolk is a great option. Uh, Illinois State, which is in Heartland America, middle of the United States, they are ranked top 16 for actuarial science and are one of only 17 centers of actuarial excellence in the United States, which is the highest level level of recognition for the Society of Actuaries to offer to universities. So that's very well known. And one last is Hofstra. And Hofstra is, is exceptional with communications. And for the last three debates, presidential debates, with the exception of 2020, so 2008, 2012, 2016, Hofstra was hosting the presidential debates on their campus. And the students within the College of Communication really had all access passes to those debates. They were helping with everything from, you know, interviewing candidates to um, helping with the cameras to setting up the audience. I mean, the College of Communication students at Hofstra were really involved with that. So those are just some of the unique programs that the Intu universities offer. That's amazing. That's a fantastic nuggets because you know, <laughs> it's very overwhelming. I mean, there are over 4,000 universities in America and people want to know where do I go for something very specific. So it's really good to kind of have those diamonds in your head about um, you know the universities that are good for, for certain things. And the fashion one with uh, CSU kind of blows me away because <laughs> It's cow. It's a cow town. It's cowboy country. <laughs> it is. Yep, it is. Not being far from Denver, but still, yes. <laughs> I mean, the biggest happening in Denver is the is the stock show every year. You got to watch rodeo and see, you know, all the cowboys and their chaps and dusters. So yes, and the microbreweries. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, the microbreweries. So let's talk about admissions. So, uh -huh. South African students who have done the traditional South African matric getting mm -hmm. into university? Can they do direct entry with the into um, um, universities or yep. will they have to do a pathway or is that dependent on their SATs or whether they write an SAT or not? Yeah, so really, you, however you do on your exams, if you are doing the national, national exam and you get a four, then you would be eligible for the international year one pathway. If you get a five or higher, then you're going to be eligible for direct entry in most cases. Um, if you're doing the British curriculum and you're, and you're sitting for the Cambridge exams, the O levels are going to be required for, for um, pathway and for, certainly for direct entry. But in most cases, the direct entry is also going to require that students sit for either the AS or the A levels as well. Um, so does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, and also, sorry, um, our, our, we also have offices in Zimbabwe and mm -hmm. in Nigeria as well. So mm -hmm. I don't know if off the top of your head, um, you can speak to those admissions requirements there. So with if a student is sitting in British curriculum, WIAC is one thing, right? So WIAC mm -hmm. in Nigeria is going to be, is, is going to be a, a different exam. And typically, let me just see, again, it's going to range on every university. Um, but I would say an average of a B3 or higher 
and then you could be considered for direct entry at, at some of our universities. So if you've got a C in that range, then the pathway option might be, or international year one might be the best option. And then Zimbabwe, um, I'm only seeing the British curriculum kind of equation mm -hmm. on our guide. So, oh, ZimSec, a four or uh, five academic subjects with a three, that would be direct entry. So can we just talk about SATs, entry requirements, um, that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, so with the SATs, you know, for, for the international year one, SAT or ACT is not required. Uh, to be considered for admission or for the scholarships that are awarded to our international year one students. For direct entry, some universities, for example, like the University of South Florida, they will require it for direct entry admission because the state of Florida requires that all students sit for an SAT or an ACT to be quite required for admission. Um, like Colorado State, for example, it's not required for admission into the university, but for some programs like STEM and engineering, you will need to sit for an SAT or ACT to be um, considered for direct entry into those universities. So if a student has the opportunity to take it, I would encourage them, obviously COVID and, and, and what's going on right now, a lot of the SAT and ACT dates have been canceled or postponed to different dates. Um, and I, our universities within Intu, I know are looking at ways that, that we can help the students for direct entry and look at waiving the SAT, ACT requirements for direct. That would be for this upcoming next application cycle only. And then perhaps we'd go back to requiring the SAT or ACT. But for pathway, students do not need to sit the SAT or ACT to be required for admission to any of the programs or obviously to the university specific. Um, and then you just touched on scholarships. Can we talk a little bit more about the eligibility for scholarships for international year one and direct entry? So partial scholarships are awarded at all of our universities and they are going to range on a variety of factors, obviously dependent on the university as well. But for the international year one, scholarships are requested from your agent and are, so I, IE abroad and are based on your region. Um, for South Africa, depending on the university, it can go up to $6,000 or $7,000 depending on how long your pathway is and uh, the university that you've been admitted to. And then for direct entry, scholarships are of course also available and will vary significantly depending on, on the university. Sometimes they require a separate application. Oftentimes they're automatically awarded. You're admitted for direct entry, you get in, great, here's your merit scholarship that goes along with it. Um, and those again can depend on the, can vary on the university as well. So for example, St. Louis University automatically awards a merit scholarship for international students of $15,000 per year. Um, if there's wow. a student who graduates from a Catholic high school, they get an additional $4,000 per year. If they graduate from if they graduate from a Jesuit high school, then they get an additional $5,000 a year on top of that. So, wow. yeah, so there are some scholarships that are available. What we find is that the private schools are going to be a bit more generous on their on their merit <laughs> scholarships than the public universities because public universities depend on federal federal money to give to scholarships um, and obviously institutional as well, but private schools have a little bit more flexibility on how much money they can give away and to whom. Is there anything else that you'd like to add in about into to leave us with? Yeah, well, I think, you know, just in terms of studying in the U.S. in general, um, I think there are the U.S. university experience is going to differ from the rest of the world. All right, so, you know, obviously I went, I, I'm from the US, I went through the education system myself, so I can't speak firsthand about UK or South Africa or Australia, for example, but in the United States, what I love about the US is that you do not have to decide on your major right away in most cases. There are some where if you wanna study nursing, it's better to start in nursing and then change your mind out versus opting in at a later date because it prolongs your for, your bachelor's degree. But in, the mo in most cases, as an 18 year old, you probably don't know what you want to study. So the US could be a great option because you have the opportunity to explore different majors or different courses. You know, I think about my experience a long time ago, but I ended up changing my major officially on record nine times. And my parents were, yeah, my parents wow. were ready to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> but I finally settled on a double major in mass communications and communication studies, and I had a minor in English, and I was still done with it. Wow. 
Yep. I think it's and easier still to done know. in four years. Yes, it was a miracle. And I didn't take summer classes and that includes my internship. But that's because the credits could overlap. I could kill two birds yes. with one stone. You know, my mass comm and my comm studies classes counted as my major and my minor, but they also counted towards my core curriculum classes or my elective classes. So I was able to kill some two birds with one stone in that regard. But it's, I think a lot of times students also know what they don't want to study. So they know I'm not science, I'm not a science kid. I'm not going to take any anything science based other than my required classes in the US and I'm going to focus on other areas. So that's really the beauty of the US is that you have this flexible curriculum and have some time to decide what you want to do. The other reason why I think the US stands out is because of the residence halls and dorm life. Students. Yeah. At, Students are living, breathing, eating, socializing, studying, hanging out all on their university campus. So school and home essentially become one in the same. And, you know, social events are taking place on campus to keep you engaged and they're they're coordinated by different offices, whether it's the International Student Services, um, you know, Student Success Offices, et cetera. They're coordinating all of these different activities to make sure that students are feeling connected and settled from day one when they get to university. I also think it's much easier to make friends when students live in the residential halls. Um, you know, you're also more inclined to go to the library late at night when you need to study, when you live on campus and, and you have this residential hall mm -hmm. and dorm life. Um, I also understand that the class structure in the US is much different from other parts of the world. Students are in class for 12 to 18 hours a week. And then on top of that, outside of school or outside of class, you still have additional reading to do. And I think that's yeah. very different from other countries. And also students are evaluated or graded on their, their um, level of participation and their classroom engagement. So I think some students, international students who go to international high schools are not familiar with that. And that counts in the United States. All of this kind of adds up into what your, your final grade is in addition to obviously your exams. And then last, I really think that the university athletics are probably the most defining characteristic of American University. For Every sure. university has a mascot, which helps establish the school spirit. And they're obviously larger than life characters that help with the university's identity as well. And you become this proud warrior or you become this proud sun devil for Arizona State, uh, proud beaver for um, Oregon State University. So you've got you've got all of these um, ways to stay connected and and engaging with the American universities as well, the, the athletic part of it. So that's really what I think makes the U.S. Mm. education system stand out from other parts it, of the world. It makes me laugh, you know, when you talk about um, mascots and things, because, you know, having a child who just went, he, she says, no, I'm not going to be wearing swag all the time. One term in, boy, her underwear has ASU on it. You know, it's like, <laughs> you and just proud. and it's true and proudly you know you, your entire wardrobe becomes I mean I went to the University of Florida and Cal Berkeley I was a gator yeah. you know you were a doing, gator yeah <laughs> things at football games and of course who, who I mean I never would have worn orange until I went to the University of Florida then I <laughs> exactly. wore orange every day you know <laughs> that's very yes. much that's very yeah. much a U.S. thing you know having yeah. a niece at Edinburgh she's in the UK she wouldn't be caught dead in swag from her university. Yeah. Um, but U.S. university students, boy, you know where they go. And I, I think Washington State universities are some of the proudest, most, you know, chest thumping, you know, university um, alumni around. Anywhere yeah. you go, you know where there's a Washington State graduate. They're everywhere. Yes. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, and even if yeah. you're not going to the game on campus, if it's an away game, I mean, games are televised. There's always yeah, a way to the football game, the basketball game, the hockey game, you know, obviously. So lots of school pride with the, with the university athletics. One last comment, students can work with IE Abroad to complete the application online. It's free when students are working with that IE Abroad team. Um, and you can apply with our global application. Thank You're you welcome. so much for being here with us today and having this discussion. It really, it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and your input also on the U.S. system, that, that's very insightful. So thank you. Thanks so much for being with us. So. Yes.